Captain Mike from the mic so I wouldn't mess up that singing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that great singing. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful encouraging and lifting and worship devotion. Yeah. And thank you so much, uh, Brother Ellis, for uh, such an encouraging and supportive uh, introduction. Amen. Uh, the trust that you have placed in me, I take very seriously. And I do appreciate the privilege of being here and working with you and this congregation to live this series of gospel meetings. And uh, it's awful, awful good uh, to see Brother Ellis Sr. in the audience today. I look forward to seeing him. And I know he has been sick, and I was kind of like Paul was, uh, that his friend was sick, and, and he was looking forward to hearing from him. And I've been listening to see how you're doing, and it's so good to see you here today. Yeah, yeah. And my spirit is revived, and I rejoice at your presence in this assembly um, this morning. Mm -hmm. It's always good to have with me my wife, Laura. She's been with me on a number of occasions. Amen, uh, Laura. Some of y'all probably haven't met her as yet. And so, Sister Laura, would you just stand and uh, so the audience can see that you're with me? Amen. We are making this journey together, and uh, don't uh, I don't have I don't intend uh, to be the reason uh, that you are late in your next appointment. <laughs> I don't want you to put that on me. Uh, I don't want to have to live that through the rest of this week, and so I'm going to do my best not to be the one and that causes the delay that would cause you to have to be in a bigger hurry than necessary. Right. We are thankful to God for the manifold blessings of He bestowed upon us, and we're excited about being together today that we might uh, worship Him and give Him the glory, honor, and the praise Amen. in our lives. And I want to invite you to study with me today in the fear of the judgment to come. Yes. Realize that one day we must stand before the God of our being and give an account of the things done in our bodies. Yes, sir. Whether they're good or whether they're evil. Amen. Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word, as one that judges him. The word that I've spoken, the same will judge him in the last day. Amen. John said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Preach. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Yes. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. Yes. And we are standing in the in, on the edge of life with the future ahead of us. Right. And in that future is either a privilege to be good with God in heaven or to be this resigned to a place away from God, mm -hmm. which is called hell. Yeah. I choose heaven. Amen. I want to make heaven my home. Right. I want to go to heaven when I die. Amen. When this old world is, is destroyed and when all things are terminated in this life, right. I want a place with God in the after a while. And I invite you to come take the journey with me. If you're visiting with us today and you're not a member of the Church of Christ, we're awful glad to have you present. Amen. Our trust and pray is that your being with us will be as encouraging and as inspiring for you as having you is for us. And we trust that you'll be so encouraged that the Word of God will minister grace and goodness to your heart and food to your soul. Yeah. And that you want to hear more and more of what God's Word has to say. Yes. We can be of some assistance to you. Just let us know that we like to gather, take up the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and march down the King's Highway until we're called from labor to reward. Yes. Yeah. The message that I want to share with you today and throughout this series of meetings, I'm going to be dealing with the same theme uh, throughout this week. And I want, because I believe that Christians are people who want to go to heaven. And one of the greatest things we can do about revival is remind us of our goal. Okay. Uh, yes. Remind us of where it is we're hoping to go and planning to go. Mm -hmm. This series is designed for three groups of people. Mm -hmm. I want this message to reach to those who are not saved, <clears throat> those who are not part of the Lord's people, yeah. and to invite you to come to Jesus Christ and, yeah. and become part of the journey toward heaven. Yes. This message is also to those who have obeyed the gospel but are backslidden. Mm. And you're hanging on the threads, and mm. eternity is rapidly approaching. Mm. And that you return to the Lord and begin to be faithful to Him again. Amen. Amen. It's also to those who struggle under, this, under the pressures of life. Mm. 
and people who deal with issues that make it difficult for them to make it through life, to give you something to hold on to and remind you that there's a better land and a better world than what we're dealing with now. And so each person has something to look forward to. And I trust that you'll find your portion in the work of Word of God as we study together today. Yes. And when I talk about uh, heaven, there's a passage of scripture that really is set by John to initiate this process of getting people headed toward heaven. Mm -hmm. The Gospel of John chapter 1 says, In the beginning yes. was the Word, right. and the Word was with God, right. and the Word was God. Yeah. And the same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by Him, yes. and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Yes. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Uh -huh. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Yes. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Uh -huh. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. Yes. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Yes. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, yes, them gave him the power to become <coughs> the sons of God, yes. even to them that believe on his name. Amen. I want to show you that what John does, John's gospel is a connection with the book of Revelation. For John in the gospel introduces Christ as the beginning of our salvation. And John in Revelation presents Christ as the conclusion of our salvation. Amen. He introduces him as the one who came from eternity to past and came into time, born of a virgin, and lived among men. But he's going to show us that same Christ coming back at the end of the day to receive unto himself the glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Right. So there's a connection between these two passages of scripture. Yeah. And I want you to understand that what John shows in chapter one is that man became, became in reality an enemy, enemy of Jesus Christ and of God the Father. Yeah. What transpired was that God created the world yes. and placed man in the world Right. And then gave man instruction that of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, yeah. the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Right. But you know what happened. Yeah. Man didn't obey God. Right. He, he rejected the will of God. Right. What Adam did in the garden is kind of like the situation of a, of a great epidemic that takes place in the medical world. Mm. A person comes down with a very serious disease, mm -hmm. and the disease is a communicable disease mm -hmm. because it's catching. You can pass it on <laughs> to other folk. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the person who has it becomes the carrier of the disease. Yeah. And those who contact him become the receivers and become also carriers of the disease. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the disease has growing characteristics. Mm -hmm. In the first stage, once the doctors have examined the patient and began to try to figure out what's wrong, before they can figure out how to cure that disease, it's been passed on to somebody else. Yeah. But every time it passes on to somebody else, it takes on new qualities mm -hmm. and new symptoms. Yeah. So that the doctors are always scratching their head because they can never get ahead Every time they think they've got it up cornered and they'll be able to wrap it up, it takes on some new issues mm -hmm. and it begins to move in different directions and it's always expanding and growing and becoming something that it wasn't before. Mm -hmm. And they call in the greatest doctors in the city and, and they will scratch their heads and can't do anything about it. Well, and then they look out around the state and they call in the great doctors in the state, but when they think they've whipped it, it takes them, and they are not able to do it. Mm -hmm. And so they go national, and they call all the doctors in that they know, but those doctors are baffled to figure out right. how to keep it from continuing to grow and become worse than it was before. Right. 
Yes. Finally, they figured, well, we need to call in the greatest doctors in the world. Yeah. They called the greatest doctors in the world in. Yeah. And they gathered together and put their notes and minds together. And about time they think they have figured out how to put this disease, mm -hmm. it comes up with new issues and new symptoms, and, and they're baffled to figure out the world is, is going crazy, and people are getting afraid, and, and people are wondering if they will ever get it under control. Yeah. <laughs> then finally, they find one unknown doctor, un, a doctor that they have not even considered before. All right. mm -hmm. And they call him in, and he comes in, and he looks at the situation, he examines the evidence, and he tells them we can solve the problem. Amen. I want you to know that the medical world is still scratching its head about many diseases that it cannot cure. <laughs> but the diseases they're dealing with is not the greatest disease that keep changing every time it goes to another person. The greatest disease that keep changing Every time it goes to another person, uh -huh. it's a disease that came about in the Garden of Eden. When man ate of the forbidden fruit, the disease of sin and death passed on to man. And every person that gets the disease of sin and death manifests that sinfulness in different ways. And it's always a new way to sin. And we're looking today at new manufacturers of sin taking place all over the land. We are baffled to figure out how we're going to stop it. But a long time ago, they found a doctor that was an unusual doctor. He didn't come from the great schools and universities. But it came through the process of time, through the portals of glory, is not going to be found in a medical land. Right. On a hill far away mm -hmm. stood an old rugged cross, yes, the emblem of suffering and shame. Yes, it was on that cross that the blood of Jesus Christ yes, was poured out for the sins of the world. Yes, and it's that blood yes. that cleanses man of his sins right. and cures him of the disease of sin. And that blood is available to men today. Amen. one with another. The blood of Christ the Son cleanseth us from all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus is the cure for the sins of the world. And it is access in the water grave of baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. In baptism, we make contact with the blood. In baptism, the blood is applied to the worst condition that man has ever had. Yes, and it washes away the sin. It provides a covering for man that, that, that removes the stain of sin from his life and brings him back before God, yes. accounted righteous by the blood Amen. of Jesus Christ. Yes. See, John in essence says, in step Jesus. In the midst of all the calamities of the world, Jesus steps in. Because man's predicament had just gotten terrible. He yielded to sin. He lost his home. He lost his blessing. He lost his life. He lost his wife. He lost his place with God. Things began to get worse with Adam. And Adam's descendant got caught the germ of sin. Yes. And it introduced a new kind of murder into the world and right. false worship into the world. Yes. And it just kept on growing. Yes. And when the world got so bad that it was filled with violence everywhere, and the imagination and thoughts of man was only evil continually, right. God sent a flood yes. to cleanse the world of the evil and corruption. Yes. Yes. Saved the family by the name of Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah's wife, his son, and their wives. Yes. Yes. Then God started over again, but sin still crept in the world. And finally, God then brought Jesus, and here you and I are. And the answer to our sin problem is available to us today. We don't have to fall in the degradation of sin and remain eternal because God has an eternal cure. Yes. 
for the sin problem of the world. Come on. The real issue is that the reason sin is still spreading and the reason sin is, is becoming rampant in the land yes. is because everybody that's been infected by it yes, are not taking the remedy for it. Yes. They're not appealing to the source of healing. Yes. And as a result of that, they are continuing to pass it on to others. Yes. And I want you to know that what happened in Eden is the reason for what's happening today. Yes. And whenever a person violates God's law and walks in rebellion against God, All right. he sends a message to generations to come to rebel against God mm -hmm. and refuse to obey God. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what Paul was showing the Romans in Romans chapter 1. When it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, mm -hmm. for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Yes. Unto the Jew first and also to the Greek. Yes. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Yes. As it is written, the just yes. shall live by faith. Amen. Notice, the next thing Paul says is that the wrath of God <laughs> is revealed to all unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of God in unrighteousness. Yes. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, but became vain in their imagination, their foolish heart was yes. God. Preach. The Bible says that man kept walking in sin and kept passing sin on. And do you know in Romans chapter 1, there's a, there's a continuous line of, of digression and descending as it relates to sin? Yes. Now, if you got Romans 1, I just want to show you this right quickly here. Romans 1, pick up in verse 19. And watch what Paul says. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. That which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it unto them. See, God has revealed his truth and man has rebelled against it. And watch this. For the invisible things of him from the creation, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. God has shown us both by word and by creation. The truth about righteousness in God. Watch this. Being understood by the things that are made, mm -hmm. even his eternal power in Godhead, God mm -hmm. so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse. Mm -hmm. Read the text. Because that when they knew God, when they knew God, they glorified him, not they as God. glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful. They were not thankful to God. Watch what, John, watch what Paul says. Mm -hmm. They glorified him not as God. That's right. And they were not thankful to God. Right. You see, two of the greatest thing man does, don't need that, in contribution to the spread of sin in the world yeah. is the unthankful attitude that man has yeah. and the failure to give God the glory he deserves. Yeah. We recognize everything and everybody yeah. but God. Yeah. We, we wear the jerseys of our favorite ball players. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't give God the time of day. And said because of that, they glorified and not as God, and neither were they thankful, but became what? Vain. Vain in their imagination. In their imagination. And, in their and the foolish heart, heart was dark. Heart. Because they did not glorify God, yeah. and because they failed to be thankful to God, yeah. the vanity became the basis of their continued corruption. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And because of that, the Bible says what? Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They, mis they misplaced wisdom for words. <laughs> they thought because they had, the, they had the ability to accept the ways of the world, it meant that they were wise. And what's going on in our world today is wisdom being misplaced with words. We think we're wise because we can accept homosexuality and lesbianism, and we think that we have arrived because we have a heart that can see all of that and accept all of that. But the Bible says they were misplacing the wisdom. Yes, yes, amen. And they were actually becoming worldly and turning against God. And watch the text. And change the glory of the uncorruptible so God. They, in so doing this, they were changing the glory of God into what? Into an image. Image. Made like a corruptible man. Unto a man. And to birds. The birds. Four-footed four beasts. Four beasts. And, and creeping things. He says that instead of giving God the glory yes. and worshiping God, they have begun to worship the creature rather than the creator. Yes. Yes. Come on. And as a result, yes. 
They then are walking in iniquity. What are you saying, Paul? I'm saying that sin kept getting worse yeah. and worse yeah. and worse. Yeah. Because when sin is unchecked yeah. by the blood of Jesus Christ, yeah. it continues to get worse. Yeah. The only serum that can reduce the quality of sin and remove it from our lives yeah. is the blood of Jesus yeah. applied to us yeah. in baptism Amen. for the remission of our sin. Amen. Amen. Uh, text says what? Wherefore God also gave them to uncleanness. And God the Bible says that heart. because of the direction they were going yeah. and the unwillingness to change that course, mm -hmm. God did what? Gave them up. I want you to read it again. That's why I said Wherefore that. God also gave them to uncleanness. He gave them up to uncleanness. Through the lust of their own heart. Through the lust of their own heart. To dishonor their own bodies. To dishonor their own bodies. Between themselves. Between themselves. Yeah. Read. Who changed the truth. And changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship and serve the create creature more than, than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And read the text. Read for, for this cause. For this Now in verse number 30, 32, yes, in order to save time and move forward, the text says what? Right. Backbiters, uh -huh. hands of God, uh -huh. despiteful, despiteful, proud, proud, boasters, boasters, inventors of evil inventors things, of evil things, disobedient to parents, inventors of evil things, inventors of evil things. They're inventing things. More evil is being invented. Keep going. Disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. Without without understanding. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Implacable. Implacable. Unmerciful. Unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God? Who knowing the judgment of God? And they which commit such things. That they which commit such things are worthy of death. Are worthy of death. Not only the ones who are Read it again. Not only do the same. Not only do the same. I want to make sure you get that. Yeah. He's, not, he's not saying not only that. He's saying not only the ones that do it. Yes, sir. But, but have also them, them that have pleasure in, them in those that do it. It says that if you, if you encourage it That's or it. if you're That's doing it, point. the end result is going to be the same. Yes, just a little just a little flash notice for you. Some of us can carry things that we don't even think about that we are carrying. See, our favorite movies are full of nothing but filth and corruption. The number one shows on television that we gotta that we gotta hurry up and get through with stuff so we can go back and watch. A folk who live in a low down dirt is life possible. And they are the stars that we want to see. You know I'm telling the truth? And if that is what we like to see, how then can we really put forth a message that we really don't think is the right way to go? Good point, So Paul says that in spite of the fact that the gospel is God's power to save. Uh -huh. Man isn't appealing to the power of God. He's abandoning the power of God and going his own way. And God is giving him up to his damnation, which is to come. Yes. Because the outcome of that is damnation. Yes. Well, what does that have to do with heaven? What it has to do with heaven is this. That if that's the way we're headed, mm -hmm. it's not the way to heaven. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. That is only one way to heaven. Amen. And that way is to follow Jesus yes, and to surrender completely unto him. Amen. Jesus came into this world that he might draw men to God. In Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9, the Hebrew writer is going to show us that Jesus went through tremendous stuff. Remember, John is taking us back and bringing us to the incarnation, the birth of Jesus Christ into the world. 
and showing us that he came here in order that he might save men. And the text shows the conflict between men and God when it says that he came to his own and his own received him not. That's right. They rejected the one that's, that, that, that created them and the one that came to save them. But Jesus' purpose of coming was to save us that we might take us to God. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 9, the scripture says. But we see Jesus. We see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than made angels, a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death. For the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor. Now read that again. But we see Jesus. We see Jesus. Who was made a little lower than the angels. Made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death. Now when the Bible says we're made a little lower than angels, it means that he was created under the angels. It means that he came under the angels. He came down on the level of men because he had a purpose. And he saw for the suffering of death. Read. Crowned with glory and Crowned with glory and honor. honor. That he. That is a purpose statement. Telling you what the reason is right. that he, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, should taste death, should taste death for, every for every man. It says that Christ became a human yes. that he might die for all humans. Yes. Why was he going to die for all humans? Read. For it became him. It became him for whom are all things. For whom are all things. And by whom, and by whom are all things. And bring in bringing many sons, sons to glory. glory to make the captive of their salvation, of their salvation perfect, perfect through, through suffering. suffering. The Bible says that in order to, to, to change our future and perfect us before God, Jesus had to suffer and die in our place. That's what John is introducing to us. And that's what Revelation is showing us the conclusion of. Introduced in John and concluded in Revelation that we might make in heaven our home. Amen. I read. For both he that sanctified. Both he that sanctified. And they who, and are, they sanctified who are sanctified. Are all of one. All of one. For which cause. For which cause. He is not ashamed. He is not ashamed. To call them brethren. To call them brethren. The Bible says that Jesus is really, despite how perfect he is and how righteous he is, he is ready to be your elder brother. Amen. The problem is, we're not ready to be his younger brothers oh, and younger sisters. We want to go our own way. Yeah. Going our own way will lead us to destruction. What last verse you read? Ashamed to call, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Uh -huh. Saying, I will declare, I will declare the, name the name to my brethren. brethren. In the, in the midst, midst of the church, church will I sing praise unto name. thee. All right? Now, what, what verse was that? 12. All right, read, go drop down and read verse 14 for me. For as much then, uh -huh. as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh -huh. he also himself, he took part of the same, likewise took part of the same, uh -huh. that through death, that, that is, that might, through death, he might destroy him, he might destroy him, and have the power, that has the power of death, that is, the that is the devil. Now get this. Why does the devil want Adam and Eve to eat of the forbidden fruit? That they might die. Why? Because Satan's business is death. God's business is life. Satan's business is death. Everything about Satan will end in death. Even Satan himself will be cast into the lake of fire. He's about death. The Lord is about life. He came to defeat death that he might give us life. That's why Paul said to Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I say that flesh and blood should not inherit the king himself. Neither shall corruption in heaven and corruption. But I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we should all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Yes. This drum put on interruption. This mark to put on put on immortality. Then you brought the past the sand that is written that death is swallowed up in victory. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, the strength of sin and all. But thanks be to God who gave us the victory through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, the victory comes. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. He knocks at the door of our hearts, taking entry into our heart and life, saying, Come me all that labor yes. and the heavenly labor, yeah. and I'll give you rest. Yes. Tell my yoke upon you and learn out my meek and lowly heart. 
you should find rest to your souls. Amen. You come to Christ by hearing his word. Yes, you come by believing with all of your heart. Yes. You come by repenting of every sin. Yes. By confessing faith in Christ as the Son of God. Yes. By being buried with him in the water of grave of baptism right. for the forgiveness of your sins. Right. In baptism, God will wash away your sins. Yes. God will cleanse you. And God will save you. And God will forgive you. And then when you rise from that grave, yes. he'll add you to the church of Christ yes, so that you can live a faithful life under death. Yes. After a while and by and by, go home to live with God yes. in the city of the bliss beyond this veil of tears. Yes. No sorrow, sickness, pain, nor death right. for the former things are passed away. Right. I want you to understand that heaven ought to be your goal yes. because I want to go to heaven when I die. Amen. This evening I'm going to be talking about how to be blessed. And then I'm going to, I'm going to deal with the idea of how to know whether I'm going to heaven. Yes. I'll deal with the idea of something you need on your journey on the next night. Amen. And then I'll close by dealing with the land of no more. Yes. I want you to take the journey with me. For he's knocking at the door of your heart today. I wouldn't want to leave you today without obeying Jesus Christ, Amen. without allowing him to lead me on the journey. Yes. The journey Christ leads you on, he'll never leave you alone. He said, I'll be with you always, right. even to the end of the world. Amen. He won't abandon us, and he won't forsake us. That's better than the best friends we have, Amen. is to have Jesus in our lives. Amen. And he can, do, he can deal with the only real problem that can keep you out of heaven. Yes. Poverty won't keep you out of heaven. Yes. Wealth won't keep you out of heaven. Right. You know what will keep you out? It's sin. sin. Yes. And Jesus can deal with the sin problem. Why not say yes to him today? In fact, why not come right now while we stand and while we sing? The Savior says come. You've heard his word. Be with all of your heart. You feel of every sin. Confess before me and have you got time for the of your sin. I will be born in souls to Calvary. Yeah.